I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. No, I'm really excited to be here and I'm excited for this podcast. I've heard like what you want to do with it and some of the stories that you share with Tough Skin. And I think what you're doing is awesome. So I'm happy to be here and share a little bit of my story. Sit back, relax, get your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, your keto. Just kidding. Your keto, oh my god. No, okay, okay. We're, we're gonna get back to serious. Okay, so like tell us a little yeah. bit about yourself so we know. So, um, well, like we said before, my name is Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but I was born and raised in the church. I had two incredible parents that, you know, always showed me love, always made sure that I was a great student, you know, focused on a great career. I have an amazing little sister. I was always surrounded by incredible friends and pastors around me and, you know, all these special, wonderful, incredible men and women of God. But there was a lot of things that were going on in my personal life that people didn't know about and some of it got pretty dark and I feel like a lot of times people don't realize that even though everything seems good on the outside even though your Instagram photo looks like you're having the best life in the world there are just sometimes things that we walk around with that we don't even realize are weighing us down yeah. and I just remember I went up to my dad and I told him you know you're my dad but I don't love you I'm like I'm tired of you and just this little kid shouting this and saying those words over and over and over again I'm like I don't love you I don't love you I don't feel nothing I don't feel anything and I remember saying that over again I feel nothing so what ended up happening to me was I grew up and I started to feel nothing. I became very cold-hearted. Um, and numb? And numb. People would in high school, whole mess of things happened. I was abused mentally, verbally, physically, and, uh, and those things really did mark me. So I knew that there was something wrong. I knew I had to make a difference. This whole time, I was going to church. Um, but I realized I need to take this seriously because I've seen how church and the Word of God and prayer change other people's lives mm -hmm. so I'm like whatever mm -hmm. happened to them you know I need to do it because clearly I'm a mess mm -hmm. what I've realized is when people don't confront scars that they have wounds from the past things that affect them emotionally um, it kind of does take a root in their heart and we don't realize that those are the things that end up affecting us later on for example um for years i it was really hard for me to touch people like to res to get a, yeah, hug. I get a hug i would freak out just a couple of years ago i would have these cycles that i would go through that i would be depressed that i would have anxiety and like when people hugged me i it got to the point where i would start shaking and i needed i needed to get out of there wow. i couldn't take it anymore it's kind of like you're feeling claustrophobic but yes not. exactly oh, wow. um and it really you know hurt my family they knew something was going on but they didn't want to you know they they really didn't know what to do none of us knew what to do i didn't even know what to do um but it became such a normal thing for me that I just learned to deal with it. Yeah, you kind of just took it as your own and walked with me. And there was a moment where I could feel how God was trying to get my attention through things that people would tell me, through dreams I would have. And it was at that moment where I was like, God wants to be with me more than I want to be with him. And after that moment, I was like, you know what, God, I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a shot and after that everything changed and I'll never forget there was this one little simple prayer that I did and it was specific words that I said that I'll tell you guys what it was it was basically me saying you know God with your loving hand go in the deepest parts of my heart in my memory in the doors that I closed years ago memories that I never wanted to look back at things that I never wanted to confront, expose it, and help me remove it and get over it. And I remember for a couple of weeks, I was just remembering things that happened to me when I was a kid, words that were said to me, things that I completely forgot happened to me. And I was able to just let go of it. Um, I was able to 
forgive my dad. I sat down with him. I spoke to him about everything that happened, you know, and it was tough, but I couldn't do it myself. I knew that I had God with me. And at the end of the day, no one is perfect. And I don't think God expects us to be perfect. Yeah. All he really expects is for us to just know what our flaws on are and to depend on him for those things and that's what i did in order for me to forgive in order for me to get over anxiety and depression and uh things with my dad things with my friends um i had awful relationships with my friends poor james james if you're listening to this shout out to you i tried to cut him off like four times wow. Just because I was like, this person loves me too much and this is weird. And I would like try to sabotage my friendships. And what I'm trying to say is I could not have done these things without learning to really lean on and depend on God. If you know someone that you know also is going through something, but you don't really know what's going on. You don't really know what to do. It's okay to not know what to do. It's okay to not have the answers because you're not God, first of all. True. Um, but just pray for them and actually be there for them. I understand that prayer is a wonderful, powerful thing that we have. Um, but besides sometimes praying, um, what someone needs sometimes is someone there, someone just to reach out to them and give them a hug or a text. Hey, I'm thinking about you. I love you. My friends. Oh, it was Albert. <laughs> <laughs> He, hey, if you're listening, Mr. War. Mr. War, uh, bang, he's bang. also been on her channel, but he texted me randomly one day, and he's like, "Hey, bro, I love you. How are you?" And I texted him, "What do you want?" <laughs> and he's like, "What do you mean? What do I want?" So I say, "I love you." And I'm like, <laughs> "Love me back." <laughs> and I'm like, oh. I texted him. I'm like, no one texts me, you know, that just to say just it. Just cause everybody wants something. Yeah. And he told me no. I just love you and I want to say hi how are you and I that's when I was like Frank there's still things that you need to work on and which goes to something else that I wanted to say which is that even though you know maybe you got over something once and maybe you overcame a battle in your mind or whatever once um, that doesn't mean that you know a thought or something or something that someone will say won't affect you later on down the road it's just important to know how to handle these things how to carry yourself and more than anything how to pursue a relationship with god which is i think something else that it's something else that i feel a lot of people lack which is uh perseverance yeah you know we Definitely. all give up easily we all look for the easy way easy out but out. one two yeah. three step by step yeah the five steps to overcome and no sometimes it's just a process we need to go through because many times in our lives we just have so much baggage and things that we carry but in reality we just need to like let go and let god